Jack has done it, and Say Young is on a path that could take her to greatness. And Victor Axelson has a career grand slam. And this time they do it. And the first Super 1000 title. And they looked every inch world champions today. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Badminton Weekly with me, Jasmine Lim. Time has flown by, hasn't it? We just saw the conclusion of the very last Super 1000 event on the calendar, the Victor China Open. And as always, the players dished out their very best, treating us to top quality badminton all throughout the week. And to highlight some of the best action, especially from the final Sunday, I'm delighted to welcome back Scotland's number one, Kirsty Gilmer. Thanks so much for joining us today, Kirsty. Thank you for having me, hi. Let's dive straight into the men's singles category. Now, we know home support could be a huge advantage, and we were expecting the Chinese players like Li Shifeng and Shi Yiti to go far. But were you surprised that it's Lu Guangzhou who represented the host in the finals? I was honestly a little surprised. Um, although I did commentate on his match against Sunyama uh, in the quarterfinals, and the first set, he was nowhere. He was not in it. And then as soon as she Key's match finished on the court next to them, all of the, the arena support turned to Lu Guangzhou and his performance went through the roof and he just brought something else to that match. I think what we've seen has been really great from Lu Guangzhou through this whole tournament is his ability to build the rallies, play a little game of chess and then find that attacking opportunity and I think we saw it really not so much in the quarterfinal, especially in that first set. But since then, I think that's what's gotten him through his quarter, his semi and his final. And I think he did that very well against Victor also, but Victor's maybe one of the most difficult people in the world to do that against. But it's a really, really nice feature of his game to um, be able to find those sharp attacking opportunities. Lou, of course, took on Victor Axelsen in the final showdown and unsurprisingly, the world number one was the heavy favourite going into it. The Big Dane was looking to bounce back from a rather disappointing world championship and had his eye on completing his Super 1000 Grand Slam as well. Despite Lou's fierce challenge, Axelsen's experience was the key in this final, wasn't it? I think so. I think there's a definite art to winning a final and I think there's an art to winning final after final after final and, and all those titles. So I think Victor would have had that, that quiet confidence that he always has, uh, always has and I mean I think only a fool would bet against Victor Axelsson in a, in a Super 1000 final. Um, so yeah, incredible uh, statistics on that for him to win every Super 1000 that has been available to collect. He has them all in his trophy cabinet, so yeah, that, a really historic day for Victor. Wow, it feels absolutely amazing. Obviously uh, in Copenhagen I was really uh, disappointed, uh, but to uh, come back with a performance like this in a major tournament uh, here at China Open, which is for me a really, really important tournament. It's a tournament I missed in my, uh, how can you say, of my all my titles. So now I have like a full, full circle, you could say. So for me, this makes me, yeah, even happier and my results. And uh, I have proved to myself that, um, you know, if uh, if I try to do my best every single day and I try to get back even after some losses, I uh, I can get better. Liang Weikeng and Wang Chang were also hoping to do better after Copenhagen and they did just that, breezing past Malaysia's Aaron Chia and So Weak in the final to end China's 22-year wait for a title in the men's doubles discipline. What do you think of their performance throughout the week and did their hard-fought victory against Sakura Hoki and Yugo Kobayashi in the last four give them the confidence boost they need to seal this? Yeah, absolutely. This has been a really great tournament for Liang and, uh, Liang and Wang. I think they've only dropped one set in this whole tournament against uh, Hoki and Kobayashi. I think coming through and beating that strong pair was really, really important and it gave them really good momentum going into that final. To, just to know as a player that even if things get tight and a little bit sticky, 
that you have it in you to make it through is actually like a really big confidence boost rather than an energy drainer. So yeah, I think they would have had a nice confidence going into that final. And then I think the situation in the final uh, with Chia and So, I think So, I don't think he was feeling his absolute best but I think he didn't want to not play. So he gave it his best, and I think that shows like real, real grit and determination from, from his part. But yeah, even so, uh, Liang and Wang have been solid all week. To show up to a home tournament and execute these wins back to back and seal off that title in front of a home crowd, and maybe even in front of like friends and family, just to, to go on court and, and have all those eyes and all those people that you really know and you can hear people that you know in the crowd, it means so much to you as a player. So to win a title at home, especially when it's a Super 1000, will, they'll be happy boys tonight, I'm sure. Now, Team Korea also had plenty to celebrate after An Se-young and So Song Jae, along with his mixed doubles partner Choi Yoo Jung, also walked away with titles in their respective categories. We are running out of superlators for An. Her amazing year continues as she walks away with the ninth title of the year. But you have to say, Akane Yamaguchi didn't really challenge An that much in the final. I think with Akane, she has maybe struggle, struggled in the last few months with that like consistent, the, the quite the same consistency as An Young, but that is uh, like that. This is the highest standard for consistency that we've ever ever had. To be doing this at 21 years old as well, like what's next? What more can we see from her? And to talk on uh, Akane Yamaguchi's maybe motivation. I don't know how you go on court and essentially play against a brick wall. Um, that's kind of what Ansi Young is bringing to the table right now. And I think something that has progressed through the year, uh, this calendar year especially, is her attack. I think she used to be a little bit more of a, of a passive player, let you come at her and you will exhaust yourself. But now she's got some little sting, actually they're not little stings, they're really sharp aggressive uh, shots um, but she has that factor of her game as well so all the other lady singles players myself included I will put myself in this category we're sitting scratching our heads thinking how do we beat her because right now she's indomitable We'll hear more from Kirsty later on in the show, but just as An Se-young brought pride to Korea, So Song Jae and Choi Yoo Jung also gave the Koreans another reason to celebrate winning back-to-back -back titles. That, along with the incredible atmosphere throughout the week, definitely left an impression on BWF commentator Shazad Haq, who was on site to witness it all firsthand. Here is Shazad to share with us more. You know, I think the atmosphere has been uh, absolutely amazing. It's clear that without three years of of action here in badminton in, in China that the crowds have come back in droves, right? They've been starved of top level action. They've been probably watching it on TV. So to finally have a Super 1000 tournament back here in China, it's very clear how the fans have reacted to it. It's good to see also supporting non-Chinese players. And even in our team hotel, you can see the reaction. We've had so many fans line up, waiting to get a glimpse of, of their stars. They're asking for the autographs, photographs, any opportunity to meet them, and the stars have been obliging. So the atmosphere has been brilliant. But the one I really want to talk about is Xiu Sung Jae. He's just won two world championships, which in itself we know is very, very hard to do. It's been a long time since someone has done what he's done. And then look how well he's done here in China. Now, we look into more detail. First of all, in the uh, mixed doubles, uh, beating Huang Yachong and Zheng Siwei again, having never beaten them in nine previous meetings and now done it twice in as many weeks. That's so impressive. And then, look, he was facing match point in the men's doubles against Wang Chilin and Li Yang. So he's got staying power. You know, another famous Korean back in the day, Manchester United's Park Ji Sung, he had a nickname, Three Lungs. Why? Because he could run all day long. I want to apply four lungs to this guy because he is non-stop. The kind of energy that's required, and by the way, the conditions are quite tough in there. It's warm in there, but he's showing stamina, endurance, a lot of character. He is someone who is so, so standing out, and we've got to keep an eye out for him as well in a few weeks' time. He's got the Asian Games coming up. 
So Seo Sung Jae is definitely for me the player of the tournament. 어 저희가 여기 높은 대회에서 우승을 한 적이 솔직히 없, 없었는데 장 저번 세계선수권 이후로 좋은 경기력을 유지하면서 이번 대회까지 솔직히 우승할 줄은 몰랐지만 그래도 어, 우승하게 돼서 너무 기분이 좋고 어, 근데 또 우승한 건 우승한 거고 이제 또 다음 대회가 또 있기 때문에 거기에 맞는 경기력으로 준비할 수 있도록 하겠습니다. Let's shift our attention now to the 7th Super 500 event of the calendar, the Victor Hong Kong Open that's happening from the 12th all the way through to the 17th of September at the Hong Kong Coliseum. Now, Tom Jukel and Delphine Del Rue may have missed out on the mixed doubles title in China, but they still achieve a milestone by making it to their first ever Super 1000 final there. Drawn to play Indonesia's Dejan Ferdinand Shah and Gloria Emmanuel Wijaja in the opening round, do you think the French pair can extend on their good run and perhaps go one further in Hong Kong? Uh, I think so. I think the French pair will have taken so much confidence from last week. I think they were seeded 7th and to get to the final, they would be very, very happy with that. The quality was there, so I think they'll be taking that, bringing it to Hong Kong and they are seeded 2 here. So hopefully that puts them in a good place in the draw. They are up against uh, Ferdin Saya and Wujaya first round. I think it will be tough. I think they'll have to hit the ground running with Tom's physicality and Delphine's consistency and just soft hands and feel at the net. I think they could go pretty far in this tournament, but we'll see they're not very experienced in going back to back deep into tournaments each week. So that'll be a big ask. Another player who will want to continue his good momentum is Shazar Hiran Rustavito. The Indonesian replaced Kunlavut Vititsan in China and made full use of the opportunity to go all the way through to the quarterfinals. He's starting as a qualifier in Hong Kong. Now, if you were in his place, what would you tell yourself to make sure you continue this progression? Yeah, Rustavito has a, has a tough one this week, considering he got promoted to the main draw last week because of Vitasarn's withdrawal. But he is back into qualification this week for Hong Kong. So um, he'll have to come through two games um, in a notoriously windy hall and not notoriously windy conditions in Hong Kong. But uh, yeah, it's, it's very tough when you feel the feel the magnitude of a main draw, especially in a Super 1000, and then suddenly you find yourself back in qualification. Mentally, he's going to have to have the right approach to that, and again, it's almost like a reset and forget what came before, and this is a new week this week. Ya, tentunya sangat tidak menduga ya untuk bisa masuk ke China ini, uh, apalagi ini pertandingan Super 1000, uh, tentunya sangat ditunggu-tunggu bagi para pemain yang lainnya tapi saya bisa masuk dari reserve untuk main di uh, match itu sangat berarti sangat senang sekali pembelajaran hari kemarin dan sekarang mungkin memang lebih diperhatikan lagi ya untuk segi apa teknik terus uh, kualitas permainan juga jang, jangan sampai kendor di babak-babak berikutnya itu aja sih Finally, Tai Tzu Ying will be in search of a fourth Hong Kong Open title. After her semi-final finish in China, who do you think will be her main obstacle here? I think going into this week, she's seeded number two. Uh, Akane Yamaguchi is seeded one. There's no Ann Se Young, so everyone has a chance. Um, so yeah, I mean, looking at uh, Tai Tzu Ying's draw, it's entirely possible for her to get to the final. She had a good week last week in China with her semi-final in the, in the Fab Four uh, that seemed to just be clogging up the semi-finals in the women's singles this year. Um, and so, yeah, I think she... I think she said herself on Instagram that she's a little tired today, um, but she has two more days to rest and recover. And uh, yeah, she'll be she'll definitely be looking forward to getting on court here in Hong Kong. Thank you, Kirsty, for taking the time to join us. As always, great insights, and we hope to see you on the show again real soon. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Now, for all of you guys watching at home, remember to catch all the action from the Victor Hong Kong Open starting from 12 September all the way through to the 17th. If you guys are on the go, stay in the loop with the latest news, match updates and statistics by using the BWF app, Badminton for you. And before we wrap up, remember to share your thoughts with us on our Facebook and YouTube pages. Until next week, take care everyone and bye-bye.